Ezekiel chapter 34. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, I have spoken. I will make with them a covenant of peace and banish wild beasts from the land so that they may dwell securely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them in all places all around my hill a blessing. And I will send down the showers in their season. They shall be showers of blessing. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit and the earth shall yield its increase and they shall be secure in their land. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their yoke and deliver them from the hands of those who enslave them. They shall no more be a prey to the nations, nor shall the beasts of the land devour them. They shall dwell securely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will provide for them renowned plantations so that they shall no more be consumed with hunger in the land and no longer suffer the reproach of the nations. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God with them. And then they, the house of Israel, are my people, declares the Lord God, and you are my sheep, human sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, declares the Lord God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we've talked about heralds, we've talked about Herod, and today we talk about herds and their shepherds. You've probably heard a lot about these shepherds over the years, but the fact is we really don't know all that much about them. Yeah, sure, we have some informed guesses of what shepherds were like, probably blue-collar, working the third shift, and outside during a cool night. But you might say that all we really know about these somebodies is that they were nobodies. At the very least, we can say that because we don't know their names or their backstories, just their occupations. Shepherds, like so many of their ancestors before them. They are like most of us, and what I mean is that we probably will never mentioned by name in any history books or even in very many news articles. So it's natural to ask, why did God choose them? We might have some guesses, but I'm nearly positive these shepherds themselves had no earthly idea why heaven would choose them to speak God's good news to. When the heavens were rent asunder and they saw the majestic and awe-inspiring messages of the Holy One of Israel, they were shocked and frightened at first. But then they heard, the, the herd heard the good word of the news of great joy, and they were assured by the angelic host. And then they were overjoyed and overwhelmed. This emotional roller coaster must have been exhausting, but their night was just beginning. And so they went to see the Christ child. Now, even if they didn't know why the heavens chose them out of all the people on earth, they were still practical people. At least they knew what the announcement was about, even if they didn't know why they were receiving it. They didn't overthink or overanalyze it. The announcement was obviously about what it claimed to be about, good news, a birth, and God's coming kingdom. Now, if we were to take a guess, it's, possible that God chose to speak to them because maybe they didn't have as many entanglements or investments to complicate matters for them. Uh, it's one guess, uh, could, could be wrong, but I mean, if we look at the New Testament, stuff and seniority, they really don't seem to be that much of an advantage when hearing the gospel. In fact, if anything, more stuff, more power, 
more money, more responsibility, can simply mean potentially more distractions or hindrances in accepting this good news. I can't think of many or any cases in the New Testament where being powerful or rich gives someone an advantage when it comes to faith. For instance, the good rich man who is conscientious and want to do the right thing ends up leaving sad because Jesus tells him to give up his possessions. Uh, how about the disciples Jesus calls? Well, whether they were tax collectors or fishermen, Jesus tells them to at least temporarily give up their positions. And the kings, Herod, Pontius Pilate, the high priest of Sanhedrin, those high, well-placed and high up places, well, almost all of them were opposed to the coming kingdom of God, although there were exceptions, perhaps because their stuff, their power, their politics interfered with the gospel. All that stuff can potentially cloud our vision. And maybe this year, God's encouraging us not to let our stuff interfere with the gospel. Don't let stuff get in the way of the gospel and the, the true joy of Christmas, which doesn't depend on stuff at all. Don't let your investment concerns or your empty bank account stop you from rejoicing in this wonderful gift, this good news that transcends all boundaries and borders. These shepherds, right, they didn't have any feasts. They may very well have skipped dinner or breakfast possibly to do what they did this night. They didn't have any great grand party planned, and yet they were still overjoyed because God's joy is something that is bigger than our circumstances. Perhaps God has, or circumstances, have already removed some distractions from your Christmas celebration this year. Now, I'm not saying that all this is a good thing, but we know that with our God, good can come of it, particularly if we focus on the good news of those angels. Don't miss the opportunity because you're too concerned or too busy bellyaching about what you don't have so that you miss what we all do have. If you're not seeing as much family this year, which is probably most of us, some, some less, if not much less, it's certainly disappointing for all of us. But it might mean that we could spend a little extra time with our Savior. If the bickering and fighting and problems of politics bother you, remember that you have a Prince of Peace. You don't need a feast to celebrate Christmas, but if you do, give thanks. All we really need, though, is Christ the Lord. And we've got him. It doesn't matter if we're alone or if we're broke or if we've got COVID. What we have surpasses any circumstance or hardship. Jesus sent to save his people from their sins. Because this is the good news not just for us, but for all people. It's the good news for me. It's good news for you. These shepherds, they didn't know why all the people on earth they had received such grace, or why they've been given such wonderful story and good news. But they did know what to do with this message. They recognized this news for exactly what it was, breaking news. Now, it may not have made it to the local news. It didn't get sent out in an email or text blast, and it wasn't shown on any drumbotrons or announced over the radio or loudspeakers. Rather, the microphone that our Father, our Heavenly Father chose to use was shepherds who went to tell it on the mountain, Jesus Christ is born. Now, I don't know why we, of all people, have been entrusted with this good news for that matter. Why has God chosen you or me? We are sinners. We're selfish. We're oftentimes normal and average. I don't know why God has chosen me or you, but chosen us he has. And we too, can go tell it on a mountain, or at least on a Cincinnati hill, that Jesus Christ is born. You've heard the good news of Jesus, who came to redeem and to fix what was broken, who came to beat down the devil and break open the prisons of this world. He came to take on and take down evil and bring in God's eternal kingdom. 
And we know, don't we, what to do with this good news as well. It's not up to television or radio or celebrities or government to share this good news. Rather, the Lord has entrusted this good news to you and to me to go and tell. Well, we might admit that we too are nobodies, but this message is for everybody. And so we continue to go tell it on a mountain or anywhere else we can that Jesus Christ is born. In Jesus' name, amen.